نو No marriage money, no bridal money has been fixed, no mehr has been decided and the, the person, the husband is divorcing the wife. It can be done. وَمَتْيَوْهُنَّ But give something in gift to them when you are divorcing. Although the mehr was not settled, the bridal money was not settled, not decided, but if you have divorced her, give something. عَلَى الْمُوسِرِ قَدَرُهُ وَعَلَى الْمُخْتَرِ قَدَرُهُ On the rich is according to his capacity, on the poor person according to his capacity. They should pay something and give some gifts. Matam bil maruf, and this should be a fair provision. Hakkan alal muhsirin, and this is an obligation on the good doers. Wa in talak tumu hunna min qabl al tamasu hunna wa qad faras tum la hunna fariza. Now this is another situation. If you want to divorce a wife. whom you have not touched up till now but the bridal money had been settled now what to do for this for ma for us to so now you will have to pay half of what you had decided and settled illa yafuna except if they they give you something if they forego something if they say no i don't want anything or او یافو الذی بیدہی اقتت النکاح اور that person foregoes in whose hands is the tie of the marriage and that what does it mean the husband the tie of the marriage is in the hand of the husband he can give divorce whenever he like the woman the wife cannot give divorce whenever she likes so the tie the knot of nikah is in the hand of the husband so actually it is half that is that has to be given But even the wife can say, "I don't want to take this half." Or even husband can say, "No, I want to give full." One tafu, if you forgo, that is, you don't give half but give full. Akra bolit takwa. This is nearer to takwa. Bala tansa bol fazla baida kum. Do not ignore the superiority between you. You are superior. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has given you the upper hand, so you should be generous. And you should give her not half but the full dowry. In the Allah be mat amaluna basir. Whatever you are doing, Allah Taala is seeing it. Half do all the salawat and salat al musta. Guard all of your prayers, and especially the mid prayer, the middest prayer. And there is nearly consensus among the mufassirin that this is salat al asr. Wa kumu lillahi qanitin. and keep standing before allah subhanahu wa taala in a very humble way with humility fine khiftum and if you are in fear for example if you are going somewhere and you are fearing that enemy is pursuing you and you want to be safe fine khiftum for rijalan aur rukbanan then you can offer your prayers even walking or riding if there is no time that you can get down and then you can say the prayer in the usual manner then when you are walking walking you can say your prayer if you are riding over camels or horses you can say your prayers on that but if if there is danger if there is khauf this is called salatul khauf fa in khiftum fa rijalan aur rukbanan fa iza amintum fazkurullah kama allamakum ma lam takunu ta'lamun when you are in peace and security Now you remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as He has taught you, Malam Takunu Taala Mool, which you didn't know before. Now how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has taught us? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has not given the details of the Salah, the prayer in the Quran. So this teaching of Salah that came to us through the practice of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was taught by Jibril Alayhi Salatu Wassalam. So actually, this this method of salah has been taught to us through firstly Jibril and then Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is why the Prophet has said, "Sallu kama rahe to muni usalli." You should pray just as you see me praying. 
सो वी हैव टू कॉपी देर कैन बी डिफरेंसेज रिगार्डिंग द ट्रेडिशन बट यू नो वन थिंग शुड बी एग्रीड अपॉन बाई ईच मुस्लिम इफ ही इज अ रियल मोमिन वी हैव टू प्रे जस्ट एज द प्रॉफिट सल्लाम यूज टू प्रे बट नाउ रिगार्डिंग दिस सुनना whether this is proved or not whether this this hadith is more strong and this hadith is less strong that is actually for the jurists and the fuqaha and the people who are knowledgeable about hadith and sunna they will decide but the, the argument would come from the sunna of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wal ladhina idha wafana minkum wa yadharuna azwajan wasiyatan wasiyatan li azwajihim matan ila al hawl ghaira ikhraj and those of you who die and they leave behind them wives they should leave a bequest in favor of their wives that for one year they should be provided you know actually we people can't appreciate these problems usually we people belonging to indo pakistan subcontinent especially we have only one mother usually people marry only one wife so the mother you know for the the heirs you know she is the mother not the wife of the father only she is their own mother so the feelings are different but perhaps one person has 10 wives that used to be there in the days of the jahiliya even in islam there could be four wives now one is the mother the rest of the three are only the wives of your father so for them you know there should have been a bequest there should have been something decided by the the person who has died that for them there should be a bequest wal nazira idha wafana minkum wa yadharuna azwajan wasiyatan li azwajihim matan ila al hawl ghair ikhraj at least for one year they should be provided for food for their clothing and they shouldn't be turned out of the houses of the deceased person for at least one year فَإِنْ خَرَجْنَا فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُسِهِنَّ but if they themselves go out if they decide to marry for example have a, a new marriage then it's none of your business to obstruct their way فَإِنْ خَرَجْنَا فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُسِهِنَّ whatever they want to do for themselves you have no no business to stop them min ma'ruf although this should be in the no way in the according to the fair manner of the society wallahu azizul hakim allah is almighty he is all wise walil mutallaqat mataun bil ma'ruf haqqan al muttaqin in the same way this was the discussion about the widows walladhina yatawaffauna walil mutallaqat mataun bil ma'ruf in the same way for the divorced women also there should be some provision and this is a duty on muttaqin people who are muttaqi who are god fearing كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ In this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his ayat clear, his signs clear so that you can understand, you can follow them in detail and in depth and so that you can follow them in letter as well as in spirit. This is a lengthy discussion and most of these issues because they are not very relevant for us usually. These things are actually abnormal in this society. but you know these are very important thing to note it four sections full four sections are devoted to these problems the most important point that you should infer is that in islamic social system maximum emphasis has been put on this social family life the relationship between wife and husband the main idea is that this family life should be strong the institution of family should be strong and because the institution family should be strong there should be some one one person at the head at the top one should be the head of the family and that cannot be both both wife and husband can be can be equal there must be some inequality you must have one at the top you know you can have a managing director and you can have 20 directors but you can't have two managing directors there can be one chairman but there can be so many deputy chairmen or and the, uh, there can, can only be one president you can have so many deputy presidents vice presidents so in the institution of family the husband has been given the upper hand he can divorce the wife cannot divorce wife can get divorce from the husband and it is called khola and she has to forego certain part of her dowry money dower 
the bridal money that was paid to her, some part she, she will have to forego if she wants to get khula from the husband. So this is definitely unequal. Actually, as men, as human beings, men and women are absolutely equal. No difference between them. But when they are wife and husband, they are unequal. Now husband has the upper hand. وَلِلْرِجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ daraja. For men, they have, there is a superiority, a degree of superiority over them. And this will be discussed, as I told you, in Surah Al-Nisa. الرَّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَا That is, that will come more clear and more obvious there in Surah Al-Nisa, inshaAllah.